Hello, everyone. Okay, I mean, hi, I'm Fatih. Uh, so basically, I work on an embedded operating system in modern C++. I'm going to be quick. Uh, so an operating system is basically responsible for managing hardware and also provide providing abstractions. So like your operating systems do th these two things, but I'm working on an embedded system, so there's no really hardware protection, so I can't really manage the hardware. Like I try to, but like you can work around me and whatever. So like in, I think in this domain, providing good abstractions are more important than the, the other aspect of an operating system. Um, also, like this is a note, you can't really still terminate in this domain because where are you going to go if you terminate? So it's important that we fail at compile time as much as possible. Now, modern C++. Uh, like, I try to use some like some of the features, techniques of modern C++ to improve efficiency, increase reliability, and basically make these embedded systems much easier to program. As you all know, they're really difficult to program from Odin's and Michael's talks. Uh, so, like, this is the this is the operating system. It's, it's portable. It's written in C++ 14. Uh, I ported lib C++ as much as I could to all the platforms that I could. So it, it runs on processors with like eight like eight bit microcontrollers with like two kilobytes of RAM. So you can do I don't know vector op optional whatever in the in those microcontrollers. I have two minutes. Okay. Um, and like I try to basically apply modern C++ practices at the lowest level. So like I don't like. Until you write some stuff to the registers, they're living in a span, for instance. There's no, never some like pointer size pairs. Uh, so like it's basically, this happened like I don't know, a month ago. So like it's just a basically something I did to catch errors at compile time. So in these domains, like in these things, there, there are things called interrupts. Like the, your computers have those as well, but like you never uh, kind of deal with that. That's basically what an interrupt does is it's like it, it hijacks the processor to execute some important code, like some data arrived, I don't know, like temperature's too high, whatever. Uh, so, and like this is basically the original preemption, right? So before we had like cool preemptive threads, this is the thing that actually preempts your program. So we can actually run into some uh, race conditions. Now due to this thing, so like this operating system supports uh, like cooperative threads, so it has some threads, you can run multiple of them. That means you can also suspend the current thread. Now. Like since I'm going to be modifying some like shared queue, and this queue is shared with like, interrupts, like to be able to suspend myself, I have to turn off the interrupts. Now, when I, at the point that I'm suspending myself, I probably lock them, try to lock a mutex, and to check whether the mutex is held or not, I probably already disabled interrupts, and I don't want to disable interrupts multiple times, so like just not to do so. Basically, the precondition of this function is that interrupts must be disabled, and if you fail to disable interrupts before calling this function, you have undefined behavior because now we have race conditions. Uh, the same thing, like a similar thing, like the, 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 the first one is only callable from like process, like thread context, but these functions, like this is a semaphore. If you don't know semaphore, it doesn't really matter, but like this up function is supposed to be called, like it's, it's supposed to be callable from both interrupts and process context. But in the interrupt, in the interrupt context, you can't really get interrupted again. So there are two, so two different versions of the same thing. One of them assumes the interrupts are already off, and the other thing is going to turn off the interrupts. Now, what I want to be able to, able to do is I want to be able to kind of prevent myself from calling this up ISR or the suspend self without first disabling interrupts. Now. How like what are the sources of disabling interrupts in this operating system? So basically, you can create an interrupt guard which acts like a state unique, you know, scope scope lock, or in an interrupt context. So basically, I model these situations with these types. So they're all empty, like they they have no they have variable members. They're all just empty types in an interrupt. So basically, I overload the up operate up thing. So if you already if you already kind of uh, disabled the interrupts, you just call this thing with the int card you already constructed, so you don't re uh, disable the interrupts again, which is basically the end of this thing. Also, I want to talk about templates, how, how to use them, so I don't, I don't have much time. So this basically looks like, this is how it looks when you kind of create a thread in like a, pre like a very primitive operating system. This is like, I don't know, free, free RTOS, embedded similar. You basically allocate some stuff, and so basically, in, like that, the, the thing it returns looks like this. You have this task info, which you holds like top of your stack and the entry point, but no, we pass some arguments, so you have to hold these things. Now you you usually have some name parameter. You also hold store the stack. You have the priority. You have some double linked list. But I don't really like if I have a function like if I have a thread that I don't use this whatever like so. <laughs> so 
the thing, the thing is templated, like. <laughs> <laughs>